Revelation 14 is showing us the second coming of Jesus Christ after the horrific events of the last chapter. Chronologically, I believe the seventh trumpet just began to sound right here. This chapter is basically parallel with Revelation 11, but doesn't focus much on the second woe. But it does mention the beast and the mark of the beast, and will show us the resurrection slash rapture, and then the wrath of God. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Remember the hundred and forty-four thousand from Revelation 7? Here they are with Jesus when he returns. If the hundred and forty-four thousand are with Jesus already as he returns, then it probably means the hundred and forty-four thousand were killed, went to heaven, and returned with Christ. I don't believe Revelation 7 ever says the 144,000 won't die. It just says they were sealed as servants of our God in their foreheads. I don't think that makes them bulletproof. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, but they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. They were special servants of God. They will probably be young Christians who are still literal virgins. They will possibly be martyred as virgins. Isn't there supposed to be something special about sacrificing a virgin and all the pagan rituals? I think these virgin martyrs are extra special to God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. John says, I saw another angel several times in Revelation, but here he's going to mention three in a row. I can't help speculate if these parallel the three woes. If so, this first angel could parallel the preaching of the 144,000. They had the seal of God in their foreheads and would have been the only ones unaffected by the painful five months of the first woe. If not, then this might be when the whole world gets taught the truth. But it's too late. Their preaching will be centered on creationism, the second coming, and submission to God. They have all been condemned because they knew the truth, but refused to believe it. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. This could parallel the second woe, but more of it, more of the end of it. If it's not a parallel, this is where Mystery Babylon, who we will focus on in later chapters, gets destroyed, right at the sounding of the seventh trumpet. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. This third angel 
parallels the third woe, whether the first two were parallels or not. Everyone with the mark of the beast will drink of the wine of the wrath of God. That wrath didn't come back in Revelation 6. It's coming in full detail in the next two chapters. I actually wonder if it will be possible for anyone with the mark to wake up to the gospel at this last moment and literally decide to cut off their hand or pluck their eye out, like Jesus said, to get rid of the mark and get saved just in time. It's just a curious speculation. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead, which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Here's another precious tidbit, like I mentioned before. We must be patient, obedient, and faithful. The very next thing to happen will be the resurrection slash rapture. I believe verse 13 is talking about those of us still alive when this occurs. We won't sleep, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15:51, but our changing into our new spiritual body will still mean we die in the Lord. We will certainly be blessed to make it to the rapture without being martyred. But remember, being martyred is a huge honor too. As long as you're a Christian, it's a win-win situation. And I looked, and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. This is Jesus. He is about to harvest what was originally planted in Genesis 1, the generations of Adam. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. This is the resurrection. It also includes those who didn't sleep. We all get new spiritual bodies, and then get raptured. Every Christian from Adam to today will be part of this. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we shall be changed, and we'll all be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. This is the wrath of God, which comes right after the resurrection slash rapture. We are not appointed unto wrath. We will see the details of this wrath in the next two chapters.